Hey, how we doing? Y'all good? So good to be with you this morning. If you have your Bibles, open them up to Acts chapter 1. Some of you have them in your lap. Do that. We're going to walk through Acts. I'm in such a good mood. Who's in a good mood today, even though you are exhausted? Can we just, everybody up on your feet real, real fast, real fast. We got to do this quick because I only got a little bit of time and I have so much to do. Um, I want you to hug the person next to you and say, Let's, God's got something for me like right now. Right now, I want, I'm all in. 20 minutes, I am, I am literally sleep deprived and feel like I might pass out. But shake them a little bit, shake them, shake them. You cannot miss what we're about to talk about right now, okay? So shake them, love them, hold them, squeeze them. Now grab a seat, let's go. Y'all ready? Okay, I'm gonna fight for you because I know you're so tired. How many of you are tired right now? I know you are. Come on, let's just be slap happy tired because this morning I wanna talk about the Holy Spirit. I do, I, like you cannot get me more excited about a topic than what we're talking about this morning. If we have been digging into the life of Christ, if we've been talking about Peter up until this point and him telling us who Jesus is and I promise you it's all about Jesus, it has all been about Jesus, the biography of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we've been Jesus, 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 all the Old Testament is about Jesus, pointing to Jesus, it's gonna always be about Jesus, and then we're going to talk about us, and we're going to talk about the church, and we're going to talk about, as a matter of fact, in the very beginning of Acts, uh, in, 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 you know, they, call it, they call it Acts, some people call it the Acts of the Apostles, it's probably more likely Acts of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to be referenced over 50 times, he's going to put on a display, as a matter of fact, if you look back at the life of Jesus, and Acts chapter 1 does this, he says this, he says, here's the thing, Everything that Jesus did, and, and, and check this out, and I think it's in verse 3 there. Everything Jesus did, everything he showed to the disciples was through the Holy Spirit. So God comes down in flesh, wants us to know how to live. He's obediently going to go to the cross. And he says, and it happens time and time and time again in Jesus' life. Look at it in the fine print. Read Jesus' life again. He will, uh, we will always find out about Jesus' relationship with the Holy Spirit. Everything he did was through the Holy Spirit. Everything he did, everything he showed, he would always say, as a matter of fact, he'd come into a town, and he'd say the Holy Spirit wasn't present, wasn't leading him to heal people, and so he wouldn't, and he's Jesus. And so what we're going to talk about this morning is I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about this Jesus, who, and, and I want to talk about, I want to move from this Jesus filled with the Spirit, obediently laid his life down, told us we, we get that, and then the church us. And so I, I love this. I, I don't know. I, I want to set this up a little bit. Jesus, for 40 days uh, after his resurrection, a lot of us don't have this in, his, in our minds. For 40 days, Jesus like walked and talked and hung out. Like for 40 days, he would go and show himself. First, he shows himself to Mary. I don't know if you knew that. But, uh, you know, of, of all the people to show himself to first, he goes to the one with the worst past. Isn't that great? I love that. And to a woman. I'm just throwing that out. But he just... And he goes and he reveals himself to her. And then next, you got the, some of the disciples. Then you've got Peter. Then he shows himself to all 10, you know, 10 of the disciples were in the room. Judas, you know, not around. And uh, he continues for 40 days. Two guys on the right, road to this little town called Emmaus. Uh, reveals himself, reveals himself, reveals himself. As a matter of fact, we're going to find out in this story. Uh, he's sitting around with a, with a group of people. He's eating. He's hanging out. He wasn't like some ghost. He was like eating. He was like, could you pass the... Whatever they, you know, the, I don't know, like some funky food. Have you ever been over there? It's fun. Anyways, passing food, eating food, and he just says to them, hey, I got something to say. And it's right here, and I'll put it up on the screen for you. It says, uh, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me, and I want to say, go on and on and on about You've heard me speak about this. For, here's the deal. John baptized with water. Remember that dude? And he was down, and, and everybody wanted to repent, and they wanted to turn their hearts towards God. And that's great. That's a great start. But I'm just telling you, John baptized with water, but in a few days, I'm telling you, you are going to be baptized. You are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What you've seen in me is going to be in you. And I love this. If, if, if you, if, I got I to gotta go so fast, and so I, I hope I don't lose you. Stay with me. Like, if somebody starts nodding off, like, nudge them, all right? Because we got, we, we got to get to the end, and I, I, I want you to hear this. John 14, he says, here's the thing. Um, John 14 through 16, if you want to read about the Holy Spirit, if you want to see how God wants to live inside of you, uh, I'm telling you, John 14 through 16, John just, like, met, lines the whole thing out. In John 14, he says, uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he said, hey, listen, I know it's been great to have me around. Wouldn't it be good to have Jesus around? 
But here's the thing. He says, I want you to know that I'm going to ask my father because I know who you are and I know what's inside of you and I know the destiny I'm calling you to. And here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray to my father and I'm telling you, I'm going to give you another, another counselor, another Meaning Jesus has been walking with you, telling where to go, what to do, who to talk to. You get to see him. You get to feel him. That's how you laugh. That's how you have fun. That's how you love people. That's how you show compassion. That's how, that's how, that's how. And that's what we need, right? We need somebody to do this with us. He says, here's the thing. I'm going to give you another counselor, another me. And they're like, another you. Yeah, and then he goes on in John 15. He says, here's the deal. If you abide in me and I in you, I promise you're going to bear much fruit apart from me. Apart from my spirit living inside of you, there's nothing you're going to be able to do. I don't care what you go back trying to do. I don't care what you try to wrap your mind in, in the best good that you can muster. I promise without me, it's going to fail. John 16, he says literally this, and, and hear this. Jesus is saying this, and he's either being serious or he's not. He says, here's the deal. It is actually better for you. He says this to his, his closest friends. It's better for you that I leave. And they're like, brother, shut up. It's never better for Jesus to leave. He says, no, 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 you don't understand. It's better for you that that I leave because if I leave, the Father, the Father's going to give his presence. Like I'm going to die on a cross and I'm going to resurrect. And I promise you, there is a Holy Spirit that's coming and you've heard me talk to you from the outside. You've seen me. You've been able to follow me kind of in the dust of, 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 of walking behind me. You've been able to see me. But I'm telling you, there's coming a day and it's a promise. It's a guarantee. It's going to happen. I am going to, you know, make a way for the Father's presence to be in you. You think it's been good so far. Just wait. Man, I got so much for you. And so, you know, I love it. He said to them in uh, Acts chapter 1, 4 and 5, and then 7 and 8, he says this. He said to them, uh, because they were asking, they were sitting around. As soon as they heard that, and they were like, all right, man, let's go, let's go, let's go. And and so they looked at him and they said, Jesus, when are you going to be king? When are you going to establish your kingdom? When are we going to start rolling? And they're still looking at Jesus as the one who is going to to do everything. And Jesus says, hey, uh, y'all, it's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. In other words, that's that's coming. My kingdom's coming, but but you're missing missing the point. And he says this, he says, but you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You're going to receive power. And and for every person in the room, you're just like them. Here's the thing. It's all about power, isn't it? I mean, if if you're going to go home, if you're going to go back to what you're going to go to and to some of the homes, and some of you are in single-parent homes, and you're helping mom raise the kids, and and that feels overwhelming to you, and people are looking at your life saying, you know, is this Jesus for real? Because it's one thing to say something. It's another thing to have something in your chest to have power, to, like, change, to, like, overcome obstacles. Some of you are going back with addictions, and it feels impossible for you to break. And we can talk all the Jesus that we want to, but is there really something inside of you that's going to give you the power to overcome? overcome those addictions? Some of you right now, the, the, the odds are stacked against you, what you have to go home to, the schools that you're going to, the, the friendships that you have to mend, everything that, literally, this, so many obstacles for you. So here's the question, does Jesus really have the power? Does the Spirit have the power in God coming into you? Do you, do you have the power to do the impossible? And so, I want to talk about power. I want to talk about how do you walk in that power. I want to talk about how do you, how do you get your arms around it. Because I can just say, just go home and, and good luck. But I, just, I want to give you uh, kind of a, a little bit of help. It, it's, it's so you can, you can look for the Holy Spirit. So you can have eyes for the Holy, the Holy Spirit because it's a promise given by the Father. And as a matter of fact, as they were standing there, and they were like, you know, we want your kingdom to come. We're ready. And, and he had been talking about the Holy Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit. Kind of like you. You're like, yeah, Holy Spirit, he's like the weird it's like the weird uncle that nobody talks about. Like he's like he's like this dude. You're like, dude, I don't, I'm not sure if I want him to show up. Like stuff goes crazy when you like he's this weird. And, and Jesus is like, man, that's not how it is. That's not how it is. That's not how it is. The Holy Spirit's gonna give you power. You're gonna have power to overcome. Power to speak. Power to be my witnesses. Power to do the impossible. Literally, he's gonna say. He says, and you're gonna be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. Y'all are gonna be all over the planet. And you're like, there's no way I have the power to do that. Some of you, right, some of you I, I wish you knew the power of just this group in your community, in your schools, if you really understood the power that's in your chest because of the God of the universe 
who made a way through by, by Christ to, to put his power inside of you. So how do you tap into that power? Because it's there. It's a promise. If you've put your faith and trust in Christ, if you've, if you, if you've gained identity into him, and so I just want to do this. I want to give you, it's kind of an acronym, and so if you know, any note takers in the room, this will keep you awake too. Note takers? Right, awesome. You guys are going to be great at school. So, um, Power. I'm just going to the right power. So I'm going to put the word power up, and I'm just going to give you, I'm going to spell it out for you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you eyes to look for the Holy Spirit, eyes to say, God, I want to partner with the power that you've put inside of me. I want to walk in that. I want to have a relationship. I just want you to know that the first thing that I had to do when I, when I wanted to start walking in power is I started seeing the Holy Spirit not as, a, and you guys know this, that, there's, that God is in three persons. It's not the Father, Son, and crazy town. It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is a person of the Godhead. And you get to have a relationship with him. And that relationship with the Holy Spirit is gonna be like another counselor. It's gonna be like the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples. That's crazy, and you get him in your chest. And he wants to talk to you. And there's a lot of misconceptions because in John chapter 16, it says the Holy Spirit's going to come and convict the world of sin in regards to judgment. And here's the thing. So we think the Holy Spirit, which is just a bad translation, he's going to convict the world of their sin because you either, if you're in Christ, you need to hear this, if you're in Christ, you have been marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you do or how you blow it. There is nothing, Romans 8 tells us, that can separate you from the love of God. You are his. You're marked. I don't, I don't care what happens. You're his. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And everyone who does not confess Christ does not, I don't know why, they would ever choose, but anyone who doesn't is now stands convicted. But that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is here to make you feel bad. That's not what that's saying. The Holy Spirit is here to be to you what Jesus was to the disciples. He wants to wake, he wants to wake you up in the morning and say, hey, how are we doing? How? And, and so I started waking up and I started saying, man, when I recognize that the Holy Spirit is a viable person of the Trinity, I started waking up in the morning and saying, hey, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do today? Because I know that the Holy Spirit is always going to direct me, always going to teach me to be like Christ, to be like Jesus. He's always going to unleash power in my life. He's always going to unleash intimacy in my life. He's always going to, when I wake up and I just have a normal day, it's because I choose a normal day. But when I wake up and I say, I want to partner with you, I want to follow you, I promise you there's not a day of my life that I do that, that a day is ordinary because that's not who I am. That's not who you are. There's power in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so here's some things I just wanna give you. Power, the first thing that there's power in, there's power in prayer. And some of you haven't experienced that before and I just, I just, I, I just want you to try something out. I want you, some of you are experiencing the presence of God for the first time this week or, or, or maybe first time since last time or last time you were at a great worship experience and that's the only time you feel his presence. But I promise you, there's not a time that I set up to meet with Jesus, to talk to him, to have a relationship with him. Some of you are early morning, some of you are not. Some of you are late night, some of you are not. But I'm telling you to live and breathe and move and walk through my day and say, Holy Spirit, even when I walk in this room and up on this thing, and even now, I'm saying, Spirit, I just, I just want to say what you want me to say. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to do what you, I want to have your eyes. I want to, and, and there's power in recognizing that there's this constant communion with, with the Father through the Holy Spirit, and that he wants to do impossible things to your life. And so there's this intimacy that comes from talking to him all the time, from, from, from saying, God, I want to be a part, I want to be a part, I want to be a part. And then and on top of that, then you start seeing things in people's lives, and he starts revealing things to you about people, and you see some brokenness, and you recognize that every day is not just a normal day, kind of like the flight that I took here just yesterday, when I'm sitting on a plane, and my younger son was sleeping, no, he's reading a book, and there's this woman named Christina, and she sits down next to me, she lives in San Diego, she runs some big uh, uh, some, some big software company, and she, uh, you know, we start talking, and, and here's the thing, this could be a normal day, or with the Holy Spirit in your chest, there is no longer normal days. 
So just yesterday, I sat on a plane with my son reading a book, and, and Christina's in here, and within five minutes of a conversation with her, she lets me know that she's been divorced, she's been hurt, she has uh, four kids, and she's just checked out on God, and on top of that, she feels like, you know what, I've given marriage a try, I'm just going to be a good mom, and so I'm going to have family life over here, and I'm just going to start dating around, because I can't join them together, because she's been so wounded by men, so wounded by the church, and it, it just never was real to her, and all of a sudden, I find myself in an eternal conversation with a woman I've I've never met her before. And God shows up in the plane. And I just said to her, and I just said to her yesterday on the plane coming in, I just just said, I said, girl, I know you're hurting. First of all, let me just apologize on behalf of men. Because sometimes... We don't get it right, and you know, I don't, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know much about your husband, but I'm just telling you that just because a man has hurt you does not rob the destiny that God has for you, girl. And she just started to weep, and I said, I just want you to know that God sees you, that he loves you, that he cares about you, and I said, can I pray with you right now? And she was kind of tearing up, and she said, I don't know. I said, I'll take that as a yes. And so I put my hand on her, and I just started to pray over her. And I promise you, I don't know the end of the story, but I know when I talk to the Father, I know when you talk to the Father, because it's not like Old Testament, where we have to get animals and bring them up, and we got to get a bunch of smoke, and we got to make a bunch of noise, and hope that God hears us. You are the sons and daughters of the King. And when you pray, y'all, when you pray, mountains move. When you pray, I know you don't see the ends of your prayers sometimes. But I'm telling you, as a believer that's been following Jesus for at least the last 20, 25 years of my life, passionately, I'm telling you, your prayers matter. And they don't just draw you to him. But when you pray, families change. When you pray, destinies are rearranged. When you pray, people's chains really drop. And I know you can't see it, but when you pray, you move the heart of the Father in an angel army. And nothing is impossible when you pray. Nothing. And you have that power, y'all. And I'm telling you, it's not just prayer. P is at the top. I have so much, I gotta, I gotta roll. So prayer. Second one is obedience. And I just need you, this is like the dirtiest word in the church. Like, you know, Jesus said time and time again, if you love me, you will obey. And we're like, oh, dad's just popped in and he's just gonna make me feel bad about all my stuff. And I'm just telling you, I just wanna say this to you. Obedience, obedience to the Father is always for your good. I can say that as a dad. And I'm just telling you, I know, I know uh, when I recognize that obedience wasn't me trying to measure up to my father or measure up to his expectations, and that obedience was the father trying to give me rocket fuel so I could do what it is that he's made me to do, it was a game changer for me. When I started really realizing that obeying the father because he doesn't want me to fall in love with money is because he wants me to live freely, he wants me to live generously, he wants me to live for the kingdom and to not care about money and not care about what people think because money controls your heart, y'all. You know what, he didn't want me to sleep around in high school, he didn't want me when I started dating to, to, to be overly physical, he didn't want me, and, and is it because I'm just living up to his expectations? No, it's because he knew the woman that he had for me, her name is Sarah, and we're living out a kingdom calling in our life, and he didn't want me to have to stumble over the past, he wanted to give me rocket fuel for the future, do you understand that? His obedience is for your power. The Holy Spirit is calling you to something great, not because he's trying to get you to measure up to a line. It's because he knows who you are, and he wants you to live in your destiny, y'all. You have power. The Holy Spirit inside you wants to help you obey. I'm terrible at obeying. Anybody terrible at obeying? If I told you to not look at the screen right now because there's going to be something awesome on it, there's no way you wouldn't look. And you know what, we're terrible at obeying, but the Holy Spirit has this power, he wants to fuel you. I remember us having the sex talk with Noah. Can I just tell you that real fast? Who's had the sex talk, actually had it with their parents? How'd it go? Okay, awkward, yeah. So I'm at Walmart, I don't know if I told you this, I'm at Walmart, I'll do this super fast. I'm at Walmart, and uh, we're walking around, and I just said to my son, I actually said this to Levi this morning, we were talking about, I said, hey, um, if you ever want to have, you know, if you ever, if you start hearing, have you, have you heard about sex? He's like, oh yeah, dad. I was like, okay. I said, well, do you, do you understand it? He's like, I, I mean, yeah. And I was like, you're right. It's like nine. 
And I said, well, if, dude, I just want you to know, um, if you ever want to talk about that, like, I'm cool, like, I, 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 I don't mind talking about that at all, not a big deal to me. I would love to talk about it, because I, th- I think sex is awesome, I think it's incredible, and I promise I know more than your nine-year-old friends. I promise I know more than your five, nine-year-old friends. I've got, I've got five kids proof, like, I get it. I know how it works. I know what it's for. And I'm crazy about it. In committed, faithful marriage, I'm telling you there's nothing, I'm gonna stop, okay? So, I promise it's for your good, okay? And he's just like, yeah, we're not talking about that right now. I'm like, okay, so I get out to the car and he's like, you know, we're, he's like, okay, can we just talk about that? And I was like, I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's talk right now. And so we start talking and, and I start explaining things and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if I've told this or not. And I start explaining things and all of a sudden he starts crying. I'm like, I think I broke him. I don't think I, I think it might be, this is like my first go around. Maybe you weren't, what's, did I, what did I not say? And it's my next one. It's this, um, it's not just Holy Spirit power, prayer, obedience. God wants to get you in the word. And here's why. Because there are a lot of things in your life that are being told to you and they're not true. They're not true about you. They're not true about your body. They're not true about your life. They're not true about our country. They're not true about people. It's not true about Jesus. And when the Holy Spirit wants to take, like obedience is fuel, the word of God is like fuel. Truth is fuel for you. You need to know the truth. I sat there and I looked at Noah and he's like crying. I'm like, I, I, I shouldn't have done this. I should have asked. And I'm just sitting there looking at him. And I said, buddy, what's wrong? And like, he's not just crying, he's weeping. He says to me, Dad, Dad, that means, like I heard what abortion is. And after God does all of that and puts people together, you mean to tell me that people are just randomly hooking up and when it doesn't work, they're just killing those things that God put inside? And he's just bawling. And I'm like, I didn't see the sex talk going this way. Now I'm crying. Why? Because the truth is, sex is beautiful. It's amazing. When God takes two people and brings them together in something beautiful that was two is now one, and now there's a fruit of that, and you get to raise this person to be, that's, that's incredible. But do you realize how skewed that is in your world? Is that what's painted Fellas, when you're looking at your phone late night? No. Is that, is that the portrayal of love and beauty that you girls, when you look in the mirror and you're trying to dress in such a way to get a boy's attention, is that the reality that you walk in, that you're not just your outside covering, that you're not just some product to be gained, that you're not just this thing, that if you wear your hair the right way and you have the right clothes and you're thin enough and you're pretty enough and your lips are puffy enough, whatever, like, that if I'm just this, then I matter? Oh, y'all, that's not true. And the word of God would tell you that's not true. But you gotta get it in. You gotta find out who you are. You gotta dig in. And the next one, prayer, obedience, word. The next one is exalt. And I love this about the Holy Spirit. When you walk with the Holy Spirit, when you wake up in the morning and say, man, I just wanna go with you. Then every time you, when you start to pray and say, I want want you to show up today. And when you start to say, you know what, I don't know how to obey, but I'm gonna do the next faithful thing right now. And when you actually open the word and you say, here's the thing, I'm not gonna just sit here and read and zone out, but I know that your truth is fuel for my life. And I I, I wanna leverage that, I wanna do that. Then something happens in your life because every moment you walk, and I almost went worship up there, but worship to most of our generation is singing and lights and feelings, but I just want you to know that there's this amazing thing that the Holy Spirit, when he takes residency in your chest, where you can't get through a day without going, wow, God, God, you're so amazing. I experienced it on the plane yesterday. I'm just zoning out and hanging out with my boy, and you just gave me a moment to alter potentially somebody's destiny and their course and to minister to somebody, and you set that up, and you gave me words, and I didn't know what to say, and God, you're incredible. All day yesterday, 
I'm just walking around going, wow, I get to walk in here and see you and some, I just love you. And I love this staff and I love these volunteers. And I'm hearing stories of what's happened in your groups. And I'm just sitting there going, wow, God, wow, you keep showing up. Wow, 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 you're amazing, God. And that's what worship is. It's when you behold something and you just go, what in the world? There's nobody like you, God. How can you be so incredible? Like, you're amazing. How could I ever give my life to anything but you? And the Holy Spirit has this power to just make you worship in every moment. And then the last one is this, relationships. The Holy Spirit wants to get inside of you, and he just wants to give you relationships. The Holy Spirit just wants to empower you to have the kinds of relationships that will feed you and fuel you. And so not only, I just, I just want to say this to you right now. If you want to go home and you walk, want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, I just spent a time in a room with a bunch of your adult leaders this morning, and I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit loves you so much, cares about you so much, that he has planted the right people in your life, and you have got to grab a hold of them. And just like if you open up the word, the Holy Spirit is going to have free reign in your heart. Just like when you open up your eyes and your mind and say, God, I just want to see you and and live like you and walk like you and and I want to obey. He's going to open up new channels of power in your life. I'm telling you, if you will go home and stay connected to this group that he's given you this week, you're going to have power in your life because you're going to have people that support you and love you and grow. And you're going to have to give grace for each other because you all mess it up all the time. And Jesus is going to come in and say, yeah, you're all mess ups, but I love you. And you need to love them just as they are, even when they hurt you. Even, you just need to get past it because then we start realizing that this gospel is really real and that there's power in real, real relationships, not fake ones. And then he's going to start leading you, and I wish I had time, but I don't, to the story after story after story of people in your school, parents in your home, brothers, sisters that don't know Christ. And y'all, I'm just going to be honest, you need power. You need the Holy Spirit inside of you to just walk with you, because I'm telling you, when I recognize that that, that if all of this is true, that I'm going to stand on the day of days, where you know, I'm going to stand before the one whose eyes blaze like fire, and, and all of a sudden to think that my father wouldn't be in that line? Y'all, that is not okay with me. And when I start seeing my neighbors and I get to know their kids, and I think for a second that they may not spend their life worshiping, understanding who they are, and that there will be a day when they either get to be entered into the Father's glory, and, 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 and somehow, because I'm a punk chicken that they're not going to enter in that there's this one thing that the spirit wants to do in me because the more you walk with him the more he just gives you his eyes and you can't walk in a room and not see people and love people and I just want you to know Jesus and I don't care what you think that I look like and I'm not going to be weird about it but I just want you to know him I just want you to know him and you walk in a gym I just walked in one last fall and I just I just said Jesus give me your eyes today Holy Spirit I know who you are and I know that I just want to you know I, I, I don't love being in big groups funny enough and I don't love settings like this but I just walk in but I know that there's somebody you have eyes for would you give me eyes for them and I walk in and I just notice this guy named Colton and I walk over to Colton and I start talking to Colton and, and literally within a month that dude is, is, is walking with Christ I can't even tell you the crazy town story and then Colton has led about seven eight people to Christ just in the last month and I'm just telling you there's a power available to you but you got, you got to recognize that, that he's calling you. There's power in prayer. There's not just a random cosmic power that's out there. you got to plug into this power. And there's power in prayer. There's power in obeying and saying, I believe that what you have for me is fuel for me. There's power in waking up and getting into the word or going to bed and getting the word and recognizing that what you say about me, Father, is true. And I'm not going to buy any false junk about what things are. There's power. There's power. And you need the power of walking with him and your eyes wide open and you walk into school and it's not just zoned out school, but you recognize that he just answered your prayer over there and he just did this over here and that thing that you're doing over there and he just starts opening up your eyes and you start saying, wow, God. He has power for you and he wants to give it to you and you're gonna talk about how to unleash that tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray over this group, and I just pray power over them, Holy Spirit power, God, that you will, they will see you, that they will receive the other counselor, 
that was planted in their chest to walk with them and lead them and grow them and disciple them. And God, I pray that you would allow them to taste the impossible. I pray that you would lead them into situations and prayers and that when they go home and they've been open up the word and they just fall asleep and they've been checked out. But God, I pray just your Holy Spirit power that would come over their lives. And when they open up their scripture on Monday, when they open up the word on Monday, when they get with their group on, on you know next week or the next two weeks, that your power, your spirit, spirit would be there because your presence wants to do the impossible in their lives. But God, they have to see, they have to taste what the disciples recognize there. Jesus at that moment ascended into heaven and he's gone. But you gave us somehow an even greater gift. That's what you said. You gave us your presence to be inside of us and walk with us. We want to walk in that power. It's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen.